Great. So we're just going to turn this just down just a pinch. And get that brightness up. So let's see here. And just increase that exposure a bit. Bit of a new setup for me, guys. My apologies if uh, I'm a little flustered here. Let's get these out of the way here. Just want to make sure that this is set up nice and well. It took me a little bit of work to get things going in a not bad way, but we should be right now live on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. How exciting is that? All right. And of course, like a total noob, I forgot to mention to any of the Discord platforms that we are live. So everyone, we are now live on Facebook, Twitch, and YouTube. Exciting stuff. have to yep, send that and man oh man oh man isn't that just exciting stuff hello how are you my lule i hope you are doing just swell Yeah, I am doing something totally new for the first time, so it might just take me a second to get started. I'm so sorry. I know you're usually not able to attend all my streams, so this one's you know, just having to do just just a little bit of work. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'll just need to fix it up. I am glad you're doing well. That makes me happy to hear. Um, we have ourselves just a massive collection of... minis really to uh, take a look at which I'm very excited to do here because what we're going to be doing is let's see here live on YouTube live on Twitch um, actually the very last second what I had to do this was not super fun. I had to cancel um, the first restreaming services that I was about to use and ended up um, last second subscribing to the uh, Streamlabs Prime, which is... Um, a little more pricey, which was why I wasn't terribly wanting to do it, but I kind of ended up having to um, out of lack of options. Bazinga, winga, how are you? How are you? All right, so it looks like this isn't too terrible for a setup, so let me just get this. Is that about right? That's no, that's a, that's a terrible color. All right increase the sharpness get the focus in um, I want to make sure that you guys can actually see things because the whole point for today's video is we're gonna be deceptively wise meme Lord how are you um, yeah today so what we're gonna talk about is we're gonna talk about whiz kids miniatures as a whole which is a bit different than what I usually do usually what I do is I talk about um, you know just the the minis uh, as we're painting them, but we're doing a pool without us way too exposed, but I'm really trying to get that brightness up. It doesn't help that I'm pale as a ghost. Um, I need 
to get that as close as I can without me shining like the sun. <laughs> um, so let's just get the, okay, here we go. So that's, that's a little bit better. I'll, man, if I wore gloves, would that like make it so that we could do this a little bit better? No, it's, like I'm, I'm seriously that pale, so. <laughs> Oh, uh, man, oh, man, oh, man. How can I do that? Okay, well, I guess we'll... Hmm. Hmm. What if I turn this off and I just go straight with like this? Does that work better, guys? You know what? Actually, no. I have a solution. I have a solution and it might work. Uh, it's too bright, too bright, too bright, too bright. But, let's see here, uh, there we go. Today is a whole new exploration for me, is how things are. All right, so we're using a little bit of natural stuff. Whoa, nope, I can't put my hands in that. That'll make you go blind. Ah, oh, man, oh man. What about this light? This light will bring a little bit of warmth to everything, a little bit. Oh, geez, I am so pale. What if I what if I lower the contrast a little bit? Does that make me less ghostly? Oh 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 oh! That did something, but I think it's because everything's darker now. Nope, no. Nope. Uh, today's a darker day than usual. We, we are in total uh, shrouded clouds right now so i am trying to do what i can here it's taking a little bit of tinkering i'm so sorry for anyone i've blinded <laughs> that's not how i usually like things to be let's see Let me lower the brightness lots of fiddling that i have to do here um but yeah let's see here man oh man oh man Chris is struggling a little bit today. Chris is struggling a little bit. I'm trying to find out how I can do this so that you guys aren't blinded by my paleness. Let's see, what if I do this? What if I do this? At this point, I'm almost tempted to like, absolutely just drench my hands in glue so that I am not just so freaking pale. Uh, let's see. Does this does this make things easier for everyone? Okay, perfect. This this is a little bit better. Why am I wearing these weird gloves? Well, um, it's not because I need gloves. It's because I, yeah, that is still too bright. But this looks this 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 works. I'm gonna be right back. I'm gonna grab a second glove. Secretly, everyone, I'm just a ghost. This should be better. There we go. Look at that. Look at that. And I'm not I'm not blinding everyone with just how pale I am. All right. So, this is better. Um, let's get into a nice closer focus so we can actually get to appreciate the models. Can we do that? This looks good. This looks good. It's still a bit too dark over there, though. And if I increase that no that that's dangerous we don't want to do that if i reduce the contrast no no contrast was nice where it was all right closest we can get all right so i know that um there we go chris do you know that we cannot see your face yes that isn't that is intentional no one can see my face today um, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and take the usable footage from this 
And we are going to try and make um, a YouTube video using some of this as an actual review. But I am still here. I am still alive. So um, my apologies for that. I can occasionally jump in here. So I can switch this on and off. So I'm going to do that a little bit here. <clears throat> Um, but for points that we want to talk about the actual mini here, uh, you'll see that me disappear as such. So, um, where do we want to start? Where do we want to start? So, I think it would be helpful if we talk about, um, you know, what WizKids is known for for a starter, and what we might expect to see with this. So WizKids is a miniatures company, um, as, as most of us may have already assumed as I'm talking about it. Let's <clears throat> get my hat on there so you don't have to see my baldness. Uh, nope, no hat. Okay, well that's fine. Baldness will just have to be dealt with on my part. <clears throat> Alright, so um, yeah, so they're most well known for, at this time, they're in the tabletop gaming scene, they're most well known for their relationship with Dungeons and Dragons. Now, interestingly, I, I think this is very peculiar, personally. Um, Dungeons and Dragons is a child company of wizards of the coast at this uh time of recording uh or sorry no wizards Dra dungeons and dragons is a product of wizards of the coast which is a child company of hasbro hasbro the toy company now let's see here oh i can do that and i can look at the multi-stream chat Ooh, exciting i wonder if i can i can switch in between there yep yeah, so only people on Twitch today, which is fine. Um, actually, I wonder if I... Quick test here. If I go in on that Facebook video, or a YouTube video, will... get to see it on my multi I can. And if I switch back and forth, Bazinga, could I get you to... Ah, there... Oh, ah, no. No, I don't want to be famous. Go away. <laughs> but that works nicely because I can see that it's there. Perfect. All right. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Cool. Um, so... We are going to continue with that. So, Wizards of the Coast, Hasbro, this is... Has, Hasbro is a toy company, um, which is... The, what I was going to bring up is why I find it so interesting that they license out their... Um, the manufacturing of miniatures to other companies. It's a bit too bright. Let's see if I can reduce the harshness of that. We do that. Ah, that's much nicer. That's much nicer. There we go. <clears throat> so, Toy Company owns role-playing game, but they don't produce their own toys. I think that's very fascinating. So, in terms of what you can purchase from Hasbro, or from, uh, getting my names all mixed up here, what you can purchase from Wizards of the Coast, you can purchase multiple different um, 
products for your games. So, for example, here... Man, that lighting is so harsh. Here we go. No. Holy heck. That's about right, but it's a bit too... Uh, here we go. So we can see this wizard. So this comes from the booster boxes you can get. So WizKids sells, um, and, and kind of early on, they, they were selling booster boxes or packs of miniatures. So what would happen is you would get um, one larger miniature, which could be anything in size from like this minotaur which is a repainted miniature uh, to little hero guys <clears throat> you, uh, this cyclops was originally from one of those booster packs and you would then get a couple of small things like gnomes or goblins um, you know medium sized creatures the size that you would get was a bit of an array. So, now, that all being said and done, um, WizKids isn't the only company that makes Dungeons & Dragons miniatures. There's also another company called Gale Force 9, and they specialize in the higher-end minis, um, such as resin miniatures so i have one on hand here the level of quality is pretty drastically different uh, try not to judge the paint job too badly on this one this one was done a fair bit earlier on um, but you can see that like the the level of detail like just in like the skin He's got little tufts of loose hair. In certain areas, you can even see that there's veins here, right? So, you know, we, we've got these two companies here that are both making Dungeons & Dragons miniatures, uh, one at a significantly higher quality than the other. Uh, you, you can see there's a lot more smooth surfaces here on this. Again, this is a pre-painted, or a, a repainted one, although it's not a great repaint job I did on that. Um, you know, this is another example here. So when you get the pre-painted WizKids minis, oh man, she she blows up as much as I do in terms of the her glow. Let's see here, can I, there we go. So we can see here, um, you know, there, there's like some small attempts of their vein work and such. Um, and occasionally what would happen, so this again, booster box, WizKids booster box, they would sometimes reproduce some of these as uh, unpainted miniatures, but more often than not, they actually will take those minis that they did do um, and they might redesign them. So here we have the Nolzer's Marvelous Unpainted Miniatures um, Frost Giant. So taking this through, because this is a very large mini. Uh, you actually have to glue in the arm. Uh, have I glued mine in yet? Yes, yes I have. So here we can see something that has much, much more detail. Um, questionable decisions sometimes. I don't know anyone who has an arm that looks like this. Like, and I, I don't mean as in terms of bulk, like, this this arm here, I mean, it's strange bends, but it still, it still makes sense. But, like, this arm here kind of looks like it's made up of balloons. Um, I, I, I tried really hard to make it look nice, but it still looks like balloons. But, like, we've got these, this lovely, like, skull here we've got a detailed face um they even went in as far as let's see if i can uh, get a little pointer here they even went as far as to like do the sag underneath his eye 
so you know, here let's see if I can get this it's like we can see like little details balloon arms yeah um, so we can see like there's that little sag there they actually like have a separation there um, and to some people it actually looks um, I, I, you'll find a lot of miniatures where people paint that as an extension of the eye but there's actually this little fold in there um, but overall it's a marvelous looking miniature especially when we compare it to something like this right there are some details here um, but you can see like this like this patch here is just kind of padded on I don't know if that's intended to have a functionality to it or if it's just to actually look like there was a hole in their sack um, and so you know there, there, there's definitely a difference in quality between the intentional unpainted miniatures versus the miniatures that you might get in their blind boxes um, to my knowledge this gorilla was released exclusively as a unpainted miniature so these are just some of the examples that we have um, in terms of what I already have on hand because I wanted to go over the discussion of, you know, what is it, what are some of the differences between the blind boxes and the, um, let's see here, the blind boxes and the unpainted miniatures, is there a difference? Uh, and one thing I'd actually like to note too, and this is actually really important. Um, so those blind box minis come with this lovely little uh, tidbit. It tells you what version it is inside of their uh, selection. It tells you the year. Um, but a lot of these are actually repurposed from board games. Um, WizKids has a license to make board games and some of the miniatures that appear in there will make their way into the blind boxes but this is actually a little problematic because the scale is smaller for some of them a lot of the skeletons end up being much much tinier um and WizKids has made some weird choices in the past so i'll see if i can find an example here with a dragon miniature so Early on, um, there was a, like, th this is a cool dragon, don't get me wrong. Um, it's gonna shine really brightly. Let me grab the green dragon. So, they had these dragons, and I really liked them. Um, and these were supposed to be young dragons. They released these with the Tyrant of Dragons uh, campaign of adventures. You know, and it's a very nice miniature. And these came in blind boxes. Um, these were very nice. But later on, Wizards or WizKids, somebody decided that it was too small to be a young dragon. And so they then released these just colossal things here. Let's uh, turn, no, zoom is fine. And that's not what we're looking for. Let's uh, drop that a little bit here. Oh, no, 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 no. I love the dragons. The dragons are beautiful. So let's, let's open this up. Yeah. I, I talk about unboxing here and yet I don't actually do it. So let's uh, just crack this open. I'm gonna have so much garbage that I have to clean up. Um, so we're gonna just toss this out here. So, oh my God, there is no, there is no right setting for this. How do I? see here there, that's better that's that's better and 
And can I get away with increasing the brightness here? I, I can, I can, okay, cool. Maybe this is the right setting for, for giving my paleness. All right, so yeah, so they ended up releasing these super cool, much larger dragons. And when I first saw them, I was like, oh, neat, adult dragons. Um, as it turned out, that was not the case. And these are young dragons. So this one doesn't seem that much of a size difference than this, but allow me to grab one of the, some of the others. So apparently I grabbed the smallest one. Um, here is a black young dragon that I had painted. And compared to this green dragon, you can definitely see there is quite the size difference. And again, I have to go and I have to fiddle in with some of the exposure. But we can see there's definitely a very large difference in size. Andrew, Andrew on Facebook, nice to see you, buddy. I am multi-streaming, so you might see me talk to people that you might not see in the chat. Um, but yeah, we're just talking about whiz kids today. We're talking about um, you know what their models are, uh, some of the history about like what is going on with them, and you might see me um, have to fiddle with my brightness a lot, just given the fact that I am so incredibly pale. That's actually why I'm wearing gloves. Not because I need to wear gloves for this, but because you'll go blind otherwise. So, um, yeah, their their dragon models are remarkable. Um, let's see here. We've got another young dragon. So here we have the bronze dragon. So we'll open that up. And so we're going to be talking about the pre or uh, the unpainted miniatures for. Let's move this. Get this out of, out of the shot. Um, what are some of the things that might be required for you if you are painting them? So one thing that makes uh, I think is a very unique approach. Have more complaints than others on it on the subject. Um, the priming on these is factory done and sometimes they're a little over zealous on the priming so i think i see an example where the prime pooled a little bit let me see if i can uh confirm that here so i can see that this area is a little thin it looks like that just might be the sculpt it's a little hard to tell they've gotten a lot better at it um but what is unfortunate is sometimes the mold lines can be quite noticeable. And so when you're trying to remove those mold lines, you're taking off primer that goes with it. Now, I know some people that pre-prime these. Um, and here we can see like the glue job. They're pre-assembled. Th these models are intended to be able to open up and you just paint them. Um, they're intended to be hassle-free, but for people who are used to Games Workshop or people who are used to, um, you know, miniatures where you go through all the work, you fill the gaps, you do all those things, there's, there's a little bit of extra work. Um, and I actually have started stripping the primer off of these models. Um, and that's what I did with this gorilla. This gorilla, I stripped all the paint off of it because there was so much just like nice detail in the grooves of the fur. Because they're factory primed, what I really, really wanted to avoid was adding more priming. Um, so when you reprime them, like, you can see there's all these little just grooves like th th this is a night there, there's no argument um like while these tyranny of dragon models look nice 
and I, 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 I quite appreciate them. The Nolzer's unpaint or marvelous unpainted miniatures are at noticeably higher quality. Um, and we can see here, like there's just all these lovely grooves, right? Um, so I, I'm very excited to paint these, but I just wanted to talk about some of what are the perks. Um, like why might you use, I choose Nolzer's marvelous miniatures and what might you find challenging? So I was talking a little, little bit about priming um, in my, uh, my Lule, uh, on Twitch, you, I know you and me both, um, we, we've talked about painting the, um, WizKids models. How accessible are WizKids models for you? Because speaking here in Canada, they are some of the easiest models to get your hands on. Um... Oh, this is a weird little defect here. And I think that's another thing I'm going to have to start talking about shortly here is uh, um, having to reshape these. You can see his spear goes lower than his uh, base. So I'm actually going to have to take some hot water and I'm going to have to just readjust this so his arm's pointing up a little bit more here. Um, YouTube, excellent. All right, so now I know my chat integration works across all three, which makes me very happy. Um, but this here's a Modron. I, I like Modron. Modrons are really cute. Um, in second edition Dungeons & Dragons, you could actually play as a Modron, as a character. I got a Duodron here too. Nice little cartoony looking guys. Um... But yeah, so as I was asking uh, my Lule, the over here in Canada, I find that WizKids models kind of dominate the game shops. Um, unless you're going to a war game store, um, it feels like any game store that holds board games or role playing games, um, you're going to find a shelf full of WizKids models. My local store has them, but miniatures like the Beholder are pretty much impossible for the store to get. Yeah, the, yeah, the nice, the really, really nice models um, like the Beholder, because um, I th this is a high demand miniature. Um, I happen, and, and and very understandably, it's it's one of the most iconic uh, monsters in the game of Dungeons and Dragons. Um, so I bought all, I, I have uh, three of these. Um, originally I got two and my partner, she wanted to paint a miniature. So uh, she got a third one here too, uh, which I ended up painting. She didn't want to finish it. Um, uh, but yeah, yes, I have, I have the plat, I have all of the platforms chat merged into one uh, demon Lord on YouTube. I most certainly do. Um, so here we go. This is actually exciting here. I believe, is this, no, this is the gold dragon wormling. Do I, which dragon wormling do I have over here? I've got a blue dragon wormling. Okay, yeah, let's let's uh, give the smallest model some. Yo, Twitch finally opened for you. There you go, demon lord. You're on two platforms at the same time. I can see both uh, comments. Exciting stuff. Um, but yeah, so talking more a bit about um, WizKids smaller models, a complaint you might hear uh, for anyone who's not already familiar with this complaint, a lot of people will talk about how the small models are pretty bad or they'll say that like the details are not great. And you know what? I think depending on which line, like, because they, they've had multiple releases, and I personally find a lot of the newer releases, you can see more of the detail preserved. So, should go in there. Like, there's lots of little dents and nicks. Because um, I was having this conversation with a friend just the other day. And, you know, so here we go. This is actually perfect. Um, 
in terms of the work, what are you working on? I am working on uh, Street Labs. Oh, what am I working on? Uh, lemons, lemons. I am doing an unboxing and I'm reviewing WizKids miniatures. Uh, I'm talking a little bit about um, some of the work that you might have to put in if you're painting them, what some of the benefits might be. Um, so I was talking about how their primer can be a bit overzealous sometimes. Let's see if I can, there we go. So here, you can see right here, there's this little little blotchy thing. It almost looks like a, like a rash. This is from the manufacturing priming. So what you usually want to do, um, it might be the, the glue as well, but you can usually just take a knife and you can just scratch away at it. And it usually looks much better. Now, again, as I mentioned, I have started um, doing stripping for a lot of these, just because for the smaller models where the details might be a little thinner, I really like to try and preserve these. And when you strip them, you end up getting you end up finding a lot of these little line fine grooves they're actually a little bit deeper because again there's only so much perfection you can expect from a manufactured um, process of priming you you as a, a person can do a much finer job on priming these minis um, i personally use an ultrasonic cleaner with uh, simple green and i find that helps a lot uh, sweet stuff. Did you get Gargantula or whatever the spelling is? Oh, are you talking about, um, oh, what's his name? Pelucranos, the world eater? Because <laughs> I got Pelucranos, the world eater here. And Whiskas miniatures are quite cheap. Uh, yes, exactly. So that that's fantastic. Thank you for adding that there, my little way. Um, I find personally the best trait in terms of uh, WizKids miniatures is the price point. So this, uh, these dragons here, I know in the US, they have a MSRP price of about $14.99. Um, your local game store might have a hard time being able to, whether it's supply, demand, cost, or what vendor they're purchasing, you might find them for like $20. Uh, typically, you don't really want to spend more than $20 on these models. Um, I personally shop from a store called 401 Games, and I order online. Um, they are a Toronto distribution company, and they sell these for um, $14.99. But then they have the, what are they called? They call them, it's like the the, the icons of the realm, I think. Um, and these are supposed to be their, their top of the line. Um, every time that there's a, a new set of miniatures, they'll usually have a icon of the realm and it's usually an incentive for you to buy a whole box of miniatures and they can be much much more expensive they're usually huge um huge or gargantuan uh in size so this here is the icons of the realm for um theros so i've got him here yeah i'll just zoom that out a little bit there there we go so that's what this one is um, I also have the Icons of the Realm for Niv-Mizzet. Now, unfortunately, I and I find this is my biggest frustration with WizKids, the Gargantuan White Dragon. The Gargantuan White Dragon is right over here. He, he is going to be opening... Um, um, now... When you're you're shopping online with them, and, and you'll you'll find this on their packaging too, and this can be incredibly discouraging. You'll find a lot of the time they don't give you a picture of the actual model. 
what they do is they'll give you a 3D render. Now, the intention for this is usually you can uh, paint it or you can use this as a reference when you're doing your painting scheme. Um, but if you're shopping online, you can't actually see the model itself. It can be a huge frustration or point of frustration or disappointment. And this was actually something that led to me not purchasing this model for a very long time. And I think a lot of people didn't purchase this model because no one actually got to see what it looks like. Um, and frankly, the pre-paint job is a little lackluster in certain areas. Now, eyes are hard. I'm not going to criticize the eyes. Eyes are just difficult to paint. Um, but you can kind of see here, it's just been uh, painted with red and a dark wash was added on. Um, it's something that you find a lot of the time in WizKids miniatures for the pre-painted stuff is they just use this black um, wash and it, it, sometimes it's going to pool in areas and that can be incredibly disappointing. Um, you can see there's just a big black blotch right there there um, so that's something that you really want to when you're purchasing them now personally I do intend on repainting this miniature um, I'm not in a huge rush to do so because if I need to throw it on the table you know if I just throw this on the table as is it it doesn't look bad like if we are standing at the distance you do at the table you know if you're looking at a table full of chaos, um, this is going to be the distance that you look at it. it it's not going to be terrible. Um, but the moment you start putting in other minis that might be a little bit more loved, or you know, the the, the care was taken more uh, in time. Time's a big thing. These are these save you so much time. If you're if you're getting a pre-painted miniature. You, you don't have to paint it. This took me, I think, something like eight hours or more to paint. So time is a, is a huge saver. Or uh, deal, deal uh, when we're talking about these kind of minis. So I'm going to put these two away so that I have a little bit more space just on the table here. Um, and I'm going to try catching up with the trap because I know I'm falling behind. Let's see here. Uh, I'll throw these guys around really anywhere. They're all kind of just going to go in, going to go into a sacrilegious bin. If I'm being terribly honest, um, and not as in the garbage bin, more of a bin as in the terms of um, I don't have a I, I have a big box of shame is what's gonna go into. So, uh, let's take a look at something that's much more meaty, if we will. Got Bahamut here, or Bahamut, depending on how you want to pronounce it. Uh, let's see here. Oh, Demon Lord, you tried to send uh, a link uh, here. I can, yeah, I can see the link there. Whiskits has a lot of furniture and odds boxes. Those are my favorite thing. They're very helpful. Yes, I do agree. Um, lemons, I, I also use a lot of those. Let's see here. Like, with Whiskits, you can buy like things like traps. Um, I really personally like just these little odds and ends. And one of the nice things about the um, the fact that they're pre-primed is you can just throw on like a contrast paint for wood and it's done. Like this is one just 
shade of contrast across the whole thing. Um, and it looks good enough for the table. Um, so in terms of, of wood, I, I will use contrast paints. I, I do like that a lot. Um, I have a favor to ask, Mellow Minis. If you decide to paint the white dragon soon, uh, can you do it on the weekend? I don't want to miss it. Yeah, I, I, I can... Uh, well, so that giant dragon is actually pre-painted. Um, but this here is not. So let's open this up here. So I, I don't see Shay in the chat yet. Um, I know... May, Shay may be sculpting. Maybe Shay's being quiet. I don't know. Uh, Shay often lurks. <laughs> That's what I get for putting that dragon up there. I got attacked by a gold dragon, guys. All right. So let's open this up. Oh, these guys just... um, and actually, this is an interesting point while I'm doing this. Um, I think this is utterly fascinating. Others might not find this quite as interesting. These miniatures, I thought they were of a black plastic before because as I mentioned, that wash kind of really uh, tears things out. But they're actually see-through. Like it's, it's a transparent plastic. Um, and that's for the ones that are in booster boxes. And interestingly, if you... Oh, hello, thank you for the um, the follow there, Lobster Art. We are just doing an unboxing today. Normally I do painting streams, but we're doing a discussion about WizKids miniatures, uh, what their benefits are, what, um, you know, things to consider. I find their cost is remarkable. Um, if you're just looking for something specific, if you're looking for something that is matching, um, you know, the art that you see in the monster manual, you don't really want to get too creative per se. I think that is a real big selling point, but I think I think nothing quite beats that cost. Um, in Canada and the US, and uh, my Lule is um, located in Europe, uh, and, and she confirmed the cost is just like for $5, or um, eight dollars, ten dollars. You know, you can get two uh, minis here. We'll, uh, do that. There we go. So you know, it, that that's a, a good selling point there. Make sure we can actually do this here. Hello there, uh, Fiddlework Gaming. Yeah, bud, I can see you. Yeah, we're we're multi-streaming. We're we're. Or across multiple platforms now. This is creepy and it's huge. It is huge. Was that SpongeBob? <laughs> oh. I mean, you could call him SpongeBob. It's not, not really a sponge. It's a. Uh, but he does have square pants. Yes, Fiddlework Gaming, I am now on Twitch and on YouTube, and we are doing this simultaneously, and this is why I did not accept Jeff Bezos' offer for affiliate, because I can't do this otherwise. Um, we're also on Facebook. So, let's take a look at these here. We're just gonna go in. I haven't gotten to look at this mini yet. Um, I've had it on, sitting on the floor in a box, hiding, waiting for a dedicated uh, unboxing video and I got my Black Friday stuff from 401 games and I was like man this is, this is the perfect opportunity Canadians assemble yeah well actually Fiddlework uh, is also Canadian um, on YouTube over there I'm, I'm not gonna dox you or say your location if you don't want it there fiddle work but uh let's see here all right ah so many i really like the fact that this comes with a boat so it gives you a means of platform here so i wrote notes down for this um let's see here so treasure 
chest. Always, you never have too many treasure chests. So this is the Nulzer's Kraken for 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons. There we go. Holy heck. All right, big box. Um, I was late to the game when I purchased this. I wasn't able to get it for the prices I usually uh, snag. But, oh, there's little rowboats. I love that there's little rowboats. Um, this went for... Uh, the MSRP for this was $34.99, but this is a couple years old now. So you might find that you're only getting it from resellers now. So I paid about $50 for this on Amazon. Um, now full disclosure, that's $50 Canadian. But you might be able to get YouTube, Twitch, and Facebook Evil Demon Lord. We're on Facebook too. Oh, it comes right out of the water. That's so cool. So that's one of the things I kind of like for this. They're, they're pretty good for their um, separate pieces if it needs to be separate. Now, taking a look at this, we're gonna go back full, much closer. Uh, nope, that's too close. There we go. So here we go. So pulling up my tiny, tiny brushes here. So we can see that, you know, there's a little bit of a seam here. Um, you know, again, these minis are not intended for self-assembling. This is kind of meant for like, you, you open the box and you start painting it yourself. Um, it's, it's a great introduction to miniature painting for noobs, uh, for new, new people who are in the hobby. Not noobs as in the, haha, noob, not good. No, no, I mean like actual new people, like people who are learning. This is... This is such a great price or um, product for being able to do that because they don't have to do the assembly. They don't have to go through the, the sprues and all that stuff. And on top of that, this model didn't cost them, you know, $200. This, this is a intended to be like a $40 miniature. Um, hey, Fiddlewort. Yeah, yeah. Twitch is saying hi to you, Fiddlewort. Oh, there you are. I see you jumped over to Twitch. Ha ha ha. There we go. Um, I'm planning an order sheep minis to practice. Yeah, exactly. Evil Demon Lord, these are intended to be very cost effective. And that is one of my favorite things about um, WizKids minis. Like, if I were to... So for $15, you can buy a blind booster box. Um, sometimes they're $20. You can get like three minis like this and put one mini like this, potentially larger. Um, you can spray it down with your own primer, and that's what I did with this. So th this, I'll give you guys a picture of what this looks like beforehand. Um, taking pre-painted miniatures and then painting over them is a totally viable option. You just have to make sure that you do um, prime them, because if you don't, it's, it's not going to turn out the way that you hope for. These are incredibly resistant to paint. You have to uh, prime them. But let's go take that reference picture that got for this. There we go. So, let's see here. So, this is what to give you an idea again the the pre-painted miniatures when they come out of the box they do not look flattering um, so you guys can see the image that was what this this exact model looked like before i repainted it um, i'm very happy with how i was able to kind of recover it if you would um, you have this mini too oh yeah no thank you uh fiddlewort yeah no it's um the, the, the booster boxes are they're worth your time they are worth your time it's just they can be very unforgiving <laughs> um let's see here i'll just turn that off there so yeah so um and 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 if you do buy a booster box and you end up repainting everything again you're getting like four miniatures for 15 or 20 dollars that's a, that's a good deal it really is 
compared to if you're going with a smaller company that does like high quality resin, you might be expecting to pay something like $30 for a single miniature. Now again, if you're doing it through a small company that does those very high detail models, it can absolutely be worth your price point. Um, you just have to know what you're going into and what your expectations are. A lot of those higher price minis that are, um, you know, 30 or so, they're resin, super high quality. A lot of them you're paying for the import prices, you're paying for the currency exchange. Um, it can absolutely be a very, um, oh, thank you for the, yeah, I, I, I am very happy with how this turned out, by the way. Um, Buying a, a brick of WizKids minis is a good, it's a great search. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. You will get less duplicates if it's if you're coming from a brick because I think if I recall correctly, Fiddleword, correct me on this if I'm wrong. Um, with the bricks, they they do intend it to be like you get at least one of everything. I could be totally wrong. So I'm going to put the Kraken away. I'm very excited about how this is going to turn out. Uh, collect all these bases. I like that they're clear bases for the, the water. I really like that a lot. Um, and man, oh man, Fiddleword was doing a, um, a demonstration of Dwarven Forge tiles the other day, and he created this wonderful um, scenery on YouTube, this paint, painting this miniature up and throwing that on that, oh man, that would look so cool. I, yeah, no, I'm, I'm excited to see how this mini goes. I would probably attempt to use an ink, ink sonnet. And actually, this is a very interesting point right here. Um, so let me put these in. someone out there is going to hear that I'm just tossing plastic minis inside of a bin and they're cringing at the sounds. <laughs> um, so I was talking a lot about the difference on um, how the process of the, what do you call, um, the priming looks. And you can actually see this right here. So it looks like this piece was primed separately from the rest. And you can see how much more detail there is in this. So like you can see all that texture. And then when we just shift over a bit, we can see there's an immediate drop in the quality of the texture, but we can still see it's there. Um, it looks like it just, it, it, this just is gonna have to be stripped um, because we can see there's all, all these spots like this looks super smooth looking at how, how the rest of the model looks i am suspecting that this if i stripped this i'm gonna get a lot more detail out of it yeah yeah uh they don't do a whole lot of sci-fi stuff but they do do oh thank you for the follow there john thank you or the the like i, I don't know if you did that on facebook or not <laughs> um yeah, so they they do Transformers miniatures, uh, which I kind of want to get my hands on. Um, I'm very excited about the prospect of that. Now, I'm going to do another large mini. I'm still holding off on the dragon. My apologies. WizKids does have stuff on Amazon. Yep. Um, just make sure you check the price points. Make sure you're not purchasing anything that's overly inflated. Um, but Evil Demon Lord, you're Canadian. Go to 401games.com. Go to 401games.com. You can't beat the prices on 401games.com in Canada. Um, I know that right now, uh, the situation of being able to support your local game store might not be the easiest, just given uh, quarantine, lockdown. Um, but I do most of my purchasing uh, through 401 games and then through my local game store next door. So, what we got here, this one's a Pathfinder Mini. 
Um, so WizKids does use Pathfinder as well, or does miniatures for Pathfinder. Um, but really, in the end of the day, there's so much crossover. There's no harm in. I mean, there's no harm no matter what. You can use whatever miniatures you want for your role playing games. If you want to go and buy a whole bunch of um, Games Workshop minis, that's an expensive way of doing it, but it's like, you you do what's funnest for you. Do what gives you your joy. So, here we got the Gargantuan Skeleton Dragon. I am very excited to paint this. Um, so let's get, oh, no, am I, that's as good as I can get? Okay, cool. So we can see here, there's some nice details on the skull. Um, so it's got nice cracks in it. Um, we've got some remnants of leather on the wings and it's got some nice texture to it too. Um, this, this is gonna be a very fun one to paint. Now, uh, talking about price points again, um, I was talking before about the unpainted miniatures and how, say, like a frost giant like this would, is expected to be about $14, $20 around that range. Um, this, I was looking up the MSRP for this here for uh, Canada and US. Um, the MSRP on this is $29.99, so it's, it's a big miniature, but it's not expected to be, um, it, it's still smaller than the Kraken. <clears throat> and this is, oh my goodness. <coughs> ah, there we go. Uh, this is $29.99 USD. I ordered this um, for 30% off on Black Friday through, again, 401games.com. This is why I, I'm not sponsored by them in any way. I just, I, I'm a big... When I purchase as many miniatures as I do, I try to make sure I'm doing it at a cost-effective manner. <laughs> That's all it is. Um, so I got this at like $23.96. But like if you look at Amazon, this is an old mod model too. This is an old miniature. Um, I've seen it on Amazon CA for $49. Uh, my local friendly game store, $39.99. Um, there's a wide range if anyone's trying to pick this up. Just be sure to check in to see where you can get it. Uh, one thing I'm not loving is that this is connected to its base. I'm gonna remove this from its base when I do come to paint it so that I can, uh, you know, I can base it myself. Um, but that is on that one there. So let's take a look here. So I'm going to go and put this up. It's a serious bull dragon, and I'm gonna do a very similar scheme to this as I did with this Minotaur. Um, and for anyone who's curious on what the stages of painting it looks like, I actually have, um, I was following Loot Studios uh, thing for painting skeletons. So the very first thing I do is I paint it now in a dark brown sepia color. And then I go over it with a golden brown, um, just doing layering, making sure to leave little bits in so you can still see that dark brown as a shadow. And you know, it's a yellow skeleton, but it looks, it still looks nice. Um, and then after that, I go over top with uh, bone shades. Um, so this is actually the three stages that I do this in now. And I'm, I'm quite happy with those results. So um, we'll, Take that away. <clears throat> and I feel like I've teased everyone enough here. I suspect Shay is a little occupied. So let's open up the, the, the cream of the crop here. The icons of the realms. Adult dragon. This is not even an ancient dragon. This is an adult or a, a huge adult dragon. So somehow, somehow, this dragon is the same size category as this giant. I don't see 
these two both being huge, but they are. So let's open this up of the box. I will say this is more box than miniature, so. see that the skulls are about relatively the same size. Whew, smelly plastic. All right, so let's take a sneak peek at this. Seems like the minis keep getting bigger. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm not against it. I, I like the, the large minis. I find that sometimes the scale can be a little odd. Um, I, f I feel this werebore is a bit too short. I expect werebores to be a bit bigger, but maybe it was a dwarf that got turned into a werebore. I don't know. But. So here we have... The dragon. And let's uh, get that focus quite right. I need to go this. No, that's too close. Oh, this is heavy. This is top heavy. All right, so here we can see. I love the detail. They actually did a really good job on the eye here. I don't know if you guys can see that very well. That looks remarkable. Big minis is a contradiction. I love contradictions. Yep. Oof, I have, I hope I'm not peaking audio for you guys here. I'll just lower that a little bit. Um, but yeah, no, this, this is looking really good. I can see once again, here we go. I'm gonna start giving things a hard time. I can see that there's little um, imperfections now I'm being hypercritical. I need to be clear on that. Uh, but we can see there's all these little like parts where the paint is. It didn't settle very well. We can see little stains um, from the washes. And these actually kind of stains from the washes are actually why I hold off on using washes a lot these days. Um, looking at the tail here, we can see a bit more of that. Let's... Uh, see here a lot of these now mind you be very clear from this size or from this distance no one's going to notice that um you know when i'm however many feet away we're not going to pay attention to any of those we're going to look at that dragon's big and it ate that goblin <laughs> Yeah, it looks like bubbles. It, it, it it's um, it just looks like it was it was sprayed on, which is very much likely the case. It, um, like they were spraying it through a spritzer or through a thing. Um, and that's what happens when you drench your mini in a wash instead of carefully putting it on. Yep, exactly, exactly. Um, no audio is great. I'm glad to hear that. Thank you very much, Sir Fiddlebert. Um, you know, I mean, I'm, I don't get me wrong. I don't intend on painting this miniature anytime soon. This mini is massive. It's beautiful. And I still have to finish my young adult or young, uh, adult dragon. Let's see here. Cause that's just an adult dra uh, dragon. The young adults. Let's see here. Eh, eh, eh. This is supposed to be a young adult white dragon who as you can see i have not finished painting um i wanted to give him a, a bluish hue to him um and you know here we've got our frost giant who's about to get wrecked um take out that goblin 
I don't think I have the the white dragon wormling yet. I don't think I do. But yeah, that's how these look. I'm excited about this. This is God, this is gorgeous. I'm very happy to see this. Um and so for, for clarification, anyone's like, that's a really big base. That looks like a gargantuan dragon. You could totally use this as a gargantuan dragon. Like this base si ring size is the right size for a gargantuan. But what they actually want, uh, and this is why they did the clear base, is it's that circle right there. That is the actual, uh, that ring is the combat. So if your heroes want to need to get five feet within it, well, they have to they have to go on the base a little bit. And now these guys are within five feet of each other rather than. What is my biggest mini? My biggest mini Fiddlewort is the Cthulhu from uh, Cool Minis Are Not, Cthulhu Death May Die. I have a mini that goes much larger than what I can show on camera. Um, it, it makes this look just a little big. <laughs> it's about the size of a toddler. All right, so put this dragon here with the other dragon miniatures. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Can it fit? I think this dragon is too big. No such thing as a dragon that's too big. More appropriate to say it's just the right size. Holy heck. Yeah, I should probably show you the dragon, shouldn't I? Or uh, the Cthulhu. I can't talk about that giant Cthulhu and not show it. Okay. All right, my rubber arm has been bent. I will show you the Cthulhu. All right, so. I call this Little Cthulhu. This is Little Cthulhu. And this. This is medium Cthulhu. So that's medium Cthulhu. This is Big Cthulhu. I can't even fit him in the camera. <laughs> so little, medium, big boy. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's no mini. <laughs> Luckily, he's hollow. Oh, he lost a wing. That's okay. The wing's not glued on yet. Where did it fall? Where did the wing fall? Um. But yeah, this Mega Cthulhu is. Where the wing is. <laughs> there we go. It got caught on a tangy thing on my roof. Ah. So yeah, that is. This is a very large Cthulhu. 
But it's not the biggest Cthulhu. Thanks for the show and tell. That's amazing. Yeah, no, it's... Um, I don't know how I'm going to do that without using a... Uh, without using an airbrush. How much does it weigh? Uh, it's maybe like five pounds, maybe 10 pounds. Probably 10 pounds. Again, it's hollow. <laughs> Thank... Thank goodness it is hollow. Um, ah, all right, so what else we got here? I've got a couple other things that we can show off. Um, so interestingly, actually, I'll, 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 I'll uh, let's unbox this. I am very curious. You, yeah, yeah, I would almost have to use house paints for the biggie. What year did this come out in? This came out in 2018. So this was an interesting decision because as far as I'm aware, let me double check on D&D Beyond here. As far as I'm aware, Thrycreen no longer exists in D&D. But I could totally be wrong on that. Nope, they totally exist. Interesting. They are in... They're in the Monstrous Manual. I had no idea Thrycreen were in the Monstrous Manual, or Monster Manual. Well, that's exciting. Let's open this up. This is from their 2018 line. So I think this is maybe Monster Menagerie 2? But yeah, that dragon is not my biggest miniature. <laughs> <laughs> Not by a long shot. Uh, that came from the Cthulhu Death May Die Kickstarter. Um, so, a little bit of history on Thrycreen and why I was so excited about this that I bought multiple boxes of Thrycreen is because Thrycreen come from a setting called Dark Sun. Um, now, obviously, 5th edition has integrated them into their monster manual in a way that you they don't have to be dark stu dark sun thrycreen um but dark sun is my favorite setting uh, it's like this nuclear wasteland like mad max um setting that oh is he missing an arm He's missing an arm. <laughs> this is the second time I've encountered a mini with a missing part. Well, I guess he lost it. That's that's all it is. He lost his arm or he was born without it. That's okay. I have others. Let's see here. I've got another one right here. What arm is he missing? No, oh, it just kind of hangs out of side. Okay. Three arms crack thry cream. That's okay. Um, so let's look at the details here. Let's let's go up and real close and personal. So, you know, looking at this, this is a really nice looking miniature. It's got all the details that I would want to see. You know, it's got like it's got a little bit of smooth bits, but it's got little nice divots here and there. We can see nice little curvatures, lots of little areas that we can do highlights on. Again, we've got a little bit of a mold line problem, but that's nothing that can't be worked with. You know, it's good. Yeah, see the leather bits. So I think um, unless Unless you guys want to see, like, a... Let's see, what else we got here? We've got Muhammad. We've got... Um... We've got Tiamat over off-screen. Oh, you know what? Let's do some giants. Let's do a giant. 
Let's unbox a giant. I love giants personally. Giants are one of my favorite things to paint. And WizKids did something that I really appreciated with their unpainted giants. Um, is that they were not all dudes. Um, they made the fire giant and the stone giant at the very least, uh, and the cloud giant. Um, those three at the very least were all female, which I thought was a nice change of pace because all we ever get is, you know, male miniatures a lot of the time. And, you know, it is, not all the minis have to be male. It's not an accurate representation. Like, does that mean all goblins are male? If so, that's neat. But I don't think that's the case. <laughs> you know, we could try to rope in outdated philosophies about how, you know, gender roles and blah, blah, gross. No one wants to hear any of that. Yeah, it's a constant struggle finding female minis. I'm glad to see they're starting to produce more of them. I'm, I'm so happy about that as well, Philbert. Um, sometimes I still have to go and put in custom orders for like 3D printed minis and the like, but like, you know, just look how remarkable this model is. And like, this cloud giant just screams power to me. Now, Unfortunately, there's not a lot in terms of texture. There's a lot of smooth surfaces, but they're not even surfaces, which is nice. As we can see, you know, there's dips, there's points of uh, break. Um, now, the only thing that keeps me from stripping this model is the fact that we have all of these really cool parts that are air. They're, they're intended just just to be shaded and be uh, you know with inks so you can keep that transparency uh, I mean you can use acrylic paints too but uh, inks are gonna be your best friend and you can see here uh, somewhere along the the factory line um, some of the paint for her feet got or uh, the primer for her feet got rubbed off so like everything all of this if I nick this, can kind of see that that's already happening. You know, we'll just do that just for a demonstration here. Because I don't mind repainting it I or repriming it. I have the exact primer that they're using on this. Uh, it's just Vallejo or Vallejo surface primer. Oh, you know what? Okay, that, that's neat, nice to know. So it's not all solid. So these are glued in. Let's see here. So if we go right here. Yeah, so here we can see uh, there's a nice little edge here. So sometimes they, they really try to do the effort of working in see-through plastic um, so that you can get... Uh, uh, there we go. So yeah, they really put in the effort to try and give you see-through plastic so that you can do uh, cool effects. So we can see here um, you know, some of that. But yeah, it's uh, it's very exciting, and I'm very happy with all these. Now I'm not gonna open up every single box I've got here because I don't necessarily think that's quite something that we need. But um, here we can see there's a box of some uh, imps and quasits. You can see that I got this on sale here. Um, and talking about price points, we can see that this was for $79.99. Uh, this came from my local friendly game store, so with the 20% off, it was more close to the MSRP or what I would find at um, 401 Games. And here we can see their recommendation. of These are some painting schemes that you can do for them. 
Um, I do really appreciate that. Got to head out. Thanks for the stream. Yeah, no worries, Fiddlebury. You have yourself a wonderful rest of the day. I can't say I'm going to be on for much longer unless there's something that someone is requ requests. Um, you know, this was a very short notice stream. Uh, we've got a gold dragon, I think, here. Yeah, we've got a young gold dragon. Oof, foot is cramping up. You can see their recommended painting scheme. No, oh, that's too close. So, yeah, so we get that. And we can see, again, just even through the plastic here, we can see that there's beautiful texture on that. Um, so, you know, should you use WizKids miniatures? If the models look good, um, my personal recommendation is try to get the, if you like painting, if you like painting miniatures, my recommendation is to go with the Nolzer's Marvelous Unpainted Miniatures or uh, the Pathfinder equivalent, which is Pathfinder Deep Cuts, because these are models that are very clearly intended to be painted um, in terms of, you know, if you don't want to put in the time for painting. Yes, they do have those booster boxes. Um, the paint jobs sometimes turn out nice, sometimes it's not always the case. Um, so we can see here we've got a little frog friend. What are they called? They're called uh, Grung Elite Warriors. Um, yeah, this, this one turned out really nicely. You can see the paint job. Um, everything's really nice and clean. There's not, uh, you know, pools of black um, wash or or whatnot. Uh, you can see here this Kuatoa. It, it looks nice. Like um, I, the my feedback on the pre-painted is not that they are terrible. Do not use them. Um, simply as someone who is a miniature painter, I find them to sometimes be troublesome, particularly because I can't strip the model. I have. To, I just have to prime it. Flat, flat out, I have to prime it. There are ways that you can make use of these color schemes without um, adding too much. I saw a, um, a person on YouTube that they said, uh, use like a clear matte coat varnish and paint over top of that. Um, and you can create some differentiations in the characters. I thought that was a really cool idea. Um, and you know, sometimes you end up getting, what I really like is you can get variants of the same models. So here we can see that I have two different knolls. Uh, one is the knoll Fleshnar and one's the just a knoll. And the only difference is they have different weapons. Here, let's uh bring up some of the brightness here. I can probably get away with These are dark miniatures. Um, so yeah, so here we can see there's, um, you know, same overall posture, same items, but you know, uh, they didn't just stick, or uh, not same items, different items, but they didn't just end it at that. You can see the, the color scheme is is different. This one has a, um, a more of a reddish brown mane. This one has just a, a walnut mane. And we can see, you know, they have, fur patterns, all these kind of things. So I, I think that there is a lot of value in in both lines of products. Um, sometimes what you can do is you can purchase the board games. WizKids does Dungeons and Dragons board games and that's how I ended up getting um, some very cool minis. I don't think WizKids has released a uh, Otiug outside of the board game. And so here we can see, let's see here, getting closer. Um, you know, this is the Otiug that I painted. Let's see if I can, ooh, that, that's very crisp, I like that. Um, so yeah, so we can see it's got some nice details. The teeth are a little bit weird. Um, the plastic that they use is very uh, flimsy, but I don't think the flimsy plastic is a 
necessarily a terrible thing. Um, it's just worth noting that they they do uh, wiggle a little bit. So I can I can wiggle these, and I'm not going to break it. I can't do that with the, the middle one. The middle one's a bit too thick. Um, but if you're looking for a lot of miniatures, um, consider the WizKids board games. It's not a you know a letdown. But I think that's about all I'm going, I've got to say really um, in terms of Wiz Kids miniatures. You know, I find that the benefits are they are very cost effective. Um, again, you can get some nice sizable minis and you can do so at a price point that might work well, really well for you. Um, so again, like you can get things like this for 15 to $20. You can get, um, packs that have not one but two you know medium sized creatures for about anywhere between the market of five and eight dollars maybe ten dollars given um, you know your currency or your location globally um, I like them a lot sometimes you know the models are not terribly f uh, flattering um, in the booster boxes, you know, such as this one, but you know, it's not uh, to say that you can't remake them into something that is delightful and you're happy with, you know, as is with uh, this Minotaur. Um, their availability, they are wild, wide, eh, widely available. So it shouldn't be too difficult to get your hands on. Um, I can't speak necessarily for locations like uh, Australia or Asia. I do know, uh, just confirmed through My Lele. Have to get up early, no worries. Have a good day, My Lele. It was so nice to have you join in, and especially to provide feedback. Um, Nate's Miniatures, morning mate, heading out soon, so I thought I would say hi jump in and say hi well thanks nate yeah today i was just doing a discussion on whiz kids miniatures um whether it is the minis that you can get in the board games the blind boxes the unpainted minis the icons of the realm uh just discussing some of the pros and cons and what um parts of it might 